All right, welcome aboard, everybody. Uh, this is Jan, and tonight's presentation is about Jan's photography. And she asked me to speak, um, and so I will. I, I'm usually the talking head in front of a classroom, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, on the water, I may be the captain, but she's the admiral. So we're going to talk about her tonight. And it's about her becoming a marine photographer. Um, we met in 2004, which was the same year that our friend Kelly O'Neill passed away. I don't know if you remember her as a marine photographer in the region. And, and then we married in 2006. And the whole time, 2004, 2006, I was sailing like a son of a gun. I sailed at the Naval Academy. I did several North Americans, nationals, or pre-Olympic trials up in Newport, Rhode Island, all, all this stuff. But when she got on board, she didn't even want to handle a jib sheet. So instead, she pulled out a little Pentax. Um, little Pentax was a film camera wasn't it? like then they used to have film in cameras and so we're talking old school stuff and pretty soon her photography took on so much more notoriety than my racing ever did so and here in the center for wooden boats I've done wooden boats too I had a Paul's boat boat I had a from the 1920s an old star boat one of the very first built and its name, I love this, when I bought it, J.C. Superstar. That was the name of the, that star boat that I had. <clears throat> then I also lived on board a 42-foot old wooden classic that built in 1946. I lived on it for five years. So I've got splinters in my veins. I'm telling you, I, I, love, I love this environment. And I'm, we're both real pleased to be here tonight. So, so as things progressed, though, we shot a lot of so local races down in the Tacoma area, which is where, where we live and work. And all of a sudden, there was a big ramp up with interest. And we got <clears throat> a photo boat, sold a sailboat that we had, a 36-foot catamaran that at the time was the world's fastest production catamaran. It was all about speed, but that wasn't good enough. It was all about Jam, which is even better. It turned out way better. We bought this little 17 and a half foot Zodiac, which was too small, too wet, and too cold. So we, not too many years later, 2010, we upgraded to this, our photo boat, our current photo boat, 25 foot rigid hull inflatable, built by Valiant, but marketed in the US by Mercury Marine. And this is somebody's shot of Jan with uh, canvas surround, a little diesel heater to keep the frost off the shoelaces, and we just a lot of get up and go. This is our shot off of um, San Juan Islands. Now, it's aboard the perfect platform, and I don't know how many slides that this is going to be an issue to have this screen thing right above where that out, but I'll read it to you. Hey, stranger, good to see you. And so, and and people ask me, yes, that is my smile, okay? This is my happy face right there. If I'm on the water, you know, regardless of how my face looks, I'm having a good time. All right, <clears throat> so, so there we are. And it is blocking. Is there a way to unblock that, you know? Well, I guess not, no? I guess I need to know the, the next time I'll put all the, all the comments down below. <clears throat> if there's a way to, way to do that. So we spent a lot of time on the water working probably 30 to 40 events a year. A lot of, a lot of different reasons for, for doing it. We use these photographs an awful lot and we'll see why. Angles of projector, coming off the screen. Yeah, Oh yeah. This is giving away the whole show. Thank you. 
There we go. <clears throat> Look, everybody. All right. Hey, ask and ye shall receive. I like a bacon cheeseburger. All right. So that's what we graduated to. Perfect platform. And that's what I really want to see. Oh, darn it. We're kind of pinching ourselves with the reality of the good life that this relationship has built for us, including this is a shot somebody else took last weekend. <clears throat> Pardon me. For the round the county race up around the San Juans. And we said, shoot, we could throw this in this slideshow. Plenty of slides to go through. So I'm going to move a little quickly. But that's her nickname because of her photography, a shooter, Naman's Boat Boy. You just can't use her nickname on the VHF radio. It's going to get the wrong kind of attention. Not a good idea. And so, and then we've got Buddy the Sea Flea right here. We used to have Mocha the Sea Dog and Buddy, who is Buddy's pseudo mama. And that's Buddy the Sea Flea. He is, he is a real important on the water. He's very important too in the classroom. So exploring the Dune Peninsula. All right, now, <clears throat> a lot of photographers wonder what in the heck does Jan have in her camera bag? And then, Anna, you say that you had a, a Canon also over there. Well, here's a Canon this and Canon that and so forth. This is way beyond the technical description of everything I want to go to go through. In fact, I'm able to go through. I can't do it. I just don't know all this stuff that she knows about the camera. I'm boat boy. I get her to where she needs to be take the shots but that doesn't that doesn't appeal to me as a focus for for tonight's conversation all right and this doesn't did this come out oh, there we go let's see if this will it's not let me shoot ahead or back or pardon the space bar arrow key i know how to do how to do it here why is this frozen up sorry let's just keep that all right all right no all right got that but her camera equipment is not the focus of this presentation tonight it's all the technical stuff no, no, it's not the technical stuff. That's not what we want. All right. Instead, sailing regatta photography was her focus right out of the gate. I'm not suggesting that that should be your focus with photography, but we're going to look at all the stuff that this starting point gave her, which is pretty incredible, actually. There's a lot of things you can shoot on the water, and we'll find out why. This is at Whidbey Island Race Week one year some days are just gorgeous. here we are going out to the race course and you can see the fleet in the distance there getting ready to rumble and so we're zipping up there and i look at the skies and, oh my god jan get a picture of that please and other days are very relaxing which all the sailors are going i can't believe i'm out here today crawling along at 0 0.1 knots but it is very relaxing to do that we get some beautiful pictures and this is one of my favorites. Oh, sorry, I can't believe I said that. But other days, and here's Great White, also a flagship graduate, by the way, uh, approaching the Tacoma Narrows Bridge on a blustery day, Cherokee. This was during a Taliba Shoals race where several people, several boats had a lot of damage on them. And then, but it doesn't matter. This photo boat is, is really, really, really capable. We did the Swiftsure race one year. They had 10 to 15 foot swells and I've just got a big grin on my face because I got the right platform for delivering her to where she needs to be for the right angle on the right, uh, right topic, on the right thing. 
including this is down in the Squally Flats, uh, south of Anderson Island, getting a little airborne. You see where she's seated on the boat is right at the center of a thwartship's pivot when we're pounding like this. And with, even with a long lens, she can do her thing. And that's just fine. So the ride is important. The driver is important. <laughs> so I'm getting her to where she needs to be. All right. This is off of Shill Shoal. See the breakwater there? Some pretty rough stuff. We go out in all kinds of stuff. Lumpy, and you've all been there. If you've been out on the water, you have windy days, you have not so windy days. Okay, I just got a beep. What that means. There's a, another windy day. And this is a scat ahead race, Eric Nelson. A guy getting sick right here is that kind of a day. <clears throat> Here's a the Taliba Shoals race, a broken boom. So instead of like this guy retired from the race because it was too ornery, he wants to race all the way back to Olympia. So he replacement sail and he's beating back to Olympia with that that rig. Pretty amazing. Ocean racing offshore. <clears throat> All kinds of stuff. Glory wanted to cross tax with the Washington State Ferry System. There's Great White again, blustery day. And we get some splashy stuff even in the race to the Straits, which is from, from the Shill Shoal area up to Port Townsend for the night. Drink, 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 and then race back the next day. And then sometimes, and actually a lot of times, we have pictures of damaged gear. I don't know if this helps in insurance claims or anything like that, but but then the wind can really pick up, <clears throat> and and yet we're out there. Actually, probably a little more not more stable, but I feel more confident in that little photo boat. I've driven Navy ships, you know, 24 years in the Navy, and as a retired naval officer, I look back at that and go, that was some pretty rough stuff to get stuck in a typhoon someplace. But here in a small boat, actually in a smaller, medium-sized vessel like the ferry system, it can be a rough ride, especially since they're flat and big like this, as opposed to narrow ones, you know, like the small boys in the Navy or the battleship New Jersey that I was on. <clears throat> then it gets super ugly. You don't want to be out there on a day like this. I'm just saying, you have to pick and choose it. I don't think we'll go out today. Now, lots of one design racing action. We do this. Uh, this is really where her roots are in this marine photography thing. This is a, some etchels up on Bellingham Bay. We got the J-Fest. You can see the race committee boat for YC5 for CYC Seattle charging off the line. Lots of tight starts here with these starboats, starboat uh, championships like this. Carl Buchan there at the helm. He, he's a world champion, but he's such a gentleman that he doesn't want to beat his competitors too badly. So he has his crew dangle in the water to slow him down just a touch. Just saying, probably not. <clears throat> and there he is with Carol driving and he's out on the wire. This is up at a 505 championship up in in Bellingham Bay. I'm going to have to try to remember what, what in the heck I put in the slides up here. So gorgeous backdrops. This is down in Cascade Locks in Oregon and with a Melgis 24 national championship. Just when you're, when you're looking to shoot something, look around and go, oh my gosh, look at that. Boom, boom, boom. And you'd be surprised what you come home with. There's a lot, lot, lot of stuff. I have my head on the swivel. She's focused on this, hey Jan. Look at this and boom, he gets it. So <clears throat> this is during the round the county race about eight years ago. This is another round the county race. Look at the sky. I mean, it's not just the people on the boat or the big wave action and so forth. It's everything we have to look at. It's just, this was from last weekend. That's Mount Baker, looking at Mount Baker from the San Juan Islands. And here's Mount Baker 
looking at Mount Baker from Bellingham Bay during that same 505 championship. So you, we're surrounded, we're in a world here in the Pacific Northwest with some magnificent backdrops that add so much to the equation. Laser championships, again, Mount Rainier. This is a U.S. women's single-handed sailing championship out of Sail Sand Point on Lake Washington. Beautiful. All right. Large commercial vessels. We're going to look at some more, but we're around them all the time. In fact, they like us to approach them because we send their companies pictures of their large freighters. So here's a shot. This is Jan's photograph that she took coming back from visiting her son in Florida in the air of Mount Rainier from the airplane. You know, so she's, you just don't ever leave your camera at home. And uh, this was, was this a cell phone shot? Okay, just check it. <clears throat> but these days, cell phones do some pretty magnificent stuff. So now she's recently, what, past four or five years or so, gotten into drones. And this is actually over top of our training facility down in Tacoma. And we'll talk some more about that. But she does drone shots and has a great time with it. You see all the, all the vessels there. And this one of Tacoma Yacht Club with a big rainbow over it. Cascade Locks. I just mentioned that Melges Championship. You've been down there. You're shaking your head. It's a wonderful place to sail. And the Mercury Motors love it because they get a freshwater wash down on the inside and out. And we love it. It's just a very relaxing area. <clears throat> and in fact, in that area, they do a lot of high speed, high speed racing. So the moths, anybody ever hear the moths before? They used to be 11 footers with no wings on them in my youth. Then they put wings on them and now they're traveling very fast, very fast. This guy was from Newport, Rhode Island, the national champion, moth champion, down at a race in, in Cascade Locks in Oregon. He was just, just an amazing guy. And here they are trying to figure out, okay, how do we handle the Columbia Gorge ferry boat, paddle, paddle wheel? So start of one year, uh, they had the clip around the world race parade on the Elliott Bay waterfront before they charge off on that leg of their trip. And Jan was able to photograph this. And also, and again, I'm reading up here, multi-holes. Multi-holes, we love, love, love speed. Um, and <clears throat> here's, a, this is a shot she took some years ago at an event called DWI, Dingy's Whidbey Island, which was a, a great, great event. And Anybody know this boat, Dragonfly? Have you seen them on? Yeah, yeah, right at exit 200 up there. Uh, I don't, I don't, it's not still there. Every time we drive by, we go, oh, where'd she go? Because she was a heavy cooker. I mean, really, really. And there she is at speed. In fact, we have, and I wasn't able to find it for this particular uh, PowerPoint, a shot of her airborne on one of the legs of the round the county race just boom airborne 40 footer so great but we do focus also on pacific northwest hobies we have a real kinship with the hobie fleets and th this is her shot from down the columbia river in the skamaka way regatta where it looks like it's about to be run over by a bulbous bow of a large merchant ship. They're actually a little bit further that way than it looks, but, um, <clears throat> and then here on Lake Quinault, the Quinault, uh, Lake Quinault regatta every year. And then I took this image, the digital image and transmogrified it into a flying kite, which I thought was fun. It's just what I do in the evening, just mess around with her photos. This is fun. We also had a chance in 2013 to go down to San Francisco Bay for the America's Cup and photograph that. They ran a Hobie regatta on the waterfront before that, three days before that. And then we got a chance to shoot the Hobies next to the AC-72s, which was a bundle of speed all the way around. 
like this with a golden gate in the backdrop there. It was, it was a wonderful experience to be in that arena. The last America's Cup I had attended was in 1964 when my sailing coach from the Naval Academy was Reg Pierce was on Courageous. So that was a long time ago. And this is one of the spectator boats down there. And then, and this says right here, then PHRF. Again, I'm sorry, I have to have to read it to you that way, but here's an earlier shot of Neptune's car before the collision they had and the repaint job and all that stuff. <clears throat> the crew originally wanted us out of there. They said, hey, come on, come on. And this is absolutely, you know, Charlie McCauley's book. Hey, get, get out of the way. But now they're happy that we're there because they know they're going to be published in one of her photo sets on Janpix at Smug, Janpix.smug, but at smugbug.com. I got to get it right here. Now they celebrate. And fair, that's that same boat there, absolutely. This was right after the start of one of the uh, Winter Vashon races, which is coming up. There's Blakely Rock, all this local stuff. This is Ballistic approaching Three Tree Point. And there they are coming right at us here like that. Mel just 32. <clears throat> so we get up close and personal but having been a racing sailor, I know not to sit right in front of them and get in their wind or their way. I'm not going to do it. But I also work real hard with the sunlight. And that's probably our biggest thing on the starting line, wouldn't you think? It, it, sunlight and the rain. Sunlight right in her camera. or She wants it on the sails, if that makes sense. Here's a Banshee, Mountain 32. There's Charlie's boat again. This was taken at the last uh, Anacortes race week. And there's Glory with John Buchan right there driving all in their handsome outfits to promote teamwork, looking sharp. <clears throat> and it looks like their feet are in the water. His hull is so highly polished that the reflection of the water on his hull, it's not the actual wetness. So now working on the water, we say, oh, sailing is so relaxing, no big deal. No, no, there's a lot of physics involved. And so we have all kinds of situations to look at. Hiking out, rock on, really, really hiking out, supernova. And this guy, I don't know what he's doing, but he's working it. Carl Bucken going up a mast, pick something. And here's something interesting with Shrek and Voodoo Child so lined up, it looks like it's one boat or two boats in one. Isn't that amazing? I've always wondered how that happened. How do you make that happen? And then race support boats too. We can't, we can't have a regatta without people running them, without volunteers supplying their services, their time, their energy to do stuff. Mark boats, looks like a big one design regatta coming up there. Race committee posting the course. Now, classics afloat. And I tell you, a wooden boat like this goes by, and I, ooh, got to back off on the throttle and watch for a little bit here. This is good stuff. <clears throat> Very adventurous. Martha, I almost bought before Robert Darcy did. Uh, the schooner Martha, because that was my mother's name, Martha. And I thought, oh gosh, wouldn't that be wonderful? And also it's been sold. Oh, great. That's what I need too, with another wooden boat to work on. So there she is. This is right off of Elliott Bay Marina, that area. So a lot of classic stuff here. We worked the uh, Tacoma Tall Ships 2005. Uh, Tacoma Tall Ships 2008, uh, Tacoma's Festival of Sales. I mean, all, all these things. And this guy, we just happened to be passing by and said, hang on a second, we got to get a photo of this classic. Sometimes we stop by, exchange business card, and email them the pho photos, not for a fee, because it's about boating. It's, it's not about the money. It's not. So <clears throat> grayling, anybody know the Q-boat grayling? Like, 
don't hit. Yeah, don't hit that boat. I call her the prettiest girl at the dance. I mean, can you can you agree? Just un unbelievable. Just unbelievable. And here's the six meter here. I mean, old classics. It's just nice. It's refreshing to be able to rub elbows with a different century, quite frankly. All this rigging stuff. We have pictures of this at our in our workspace too. All this stuff. A sailing vessel Odyssey, a 90-foot sailboat right there in commencement bay with all the kids saluting and so forth learning what it's like to be on the water oh darn it <clears throat> welcome to the floss waterway is a sign there this is our home port that's where our business is and you see a visiting toll ship with the american princess cruise ship there's all kinds of stuff you can shoot on the water boating wise we're going to look at a lot of other options too for for photography an adventurous, anybody know adventurous? Plenty of people do, right? She so built in 1913 by a fella named B.B. Crowninshield. I don't know if you've, you've heard that name before. My second destroyer in the Navy commanding officer was George Crowninshield, who was his grandson. So I have a familial, or at least a uh, career familial relationship with this vessel. 135 foot, beautiful boat. <clears throat> Again, we look for the shots with the mountains. Let's get that backdrop, do that. Night runner, who passed, and the skipper, skipper's passed, but we just love stuff like this. Now, we do come across retired classics. I know it had to have been a classic at, at some time, like, like these, which are, I don't think they're, that's a, that's a secure moorage right there. And this oldie but goodie. <clears throat> and even this, this is on the water, Theophos Waterway. This is a picture of the old Martinac Shipbuilding Corporation, which closed up shop. I mean, you can buy the property for just $6 million. And then the BNSF five acre park over here and right on the Wheeler Osgood waterway be wonderful. But I'm gonna show you some other pictures about what's happened to that. It's too bad. I wanted to buy the place and just put an indoor boat ramp on there. So even the pouring down rain, bring your Boston whaler and launch it in a complete dry situation. <clears throat> now I have a thing about fenders. You know, you see a boat with their fenders out when you're operating. You know, this is the sign for loser. Well, this is the sign for fenders. You got your fenders out. Now, that makes sense here because it's a pump out boat. All right. Uh, I have to have fenders all around too, but not on this. It's beautiful. Yeah. I want to come out, enjoy some drinks in a sunny day on my yacht with your fenders out. I and mean, this is offensive. Huh? <clears throat> I mean, who does this? It must be a real rugged neighborhood with that parking lot. Now, Here's another one too. Thursday nights of the old Whibby Island race weeks, they used to have dress up all the boats. And so this was a, a far 30 named Bat Out of Hell and they put smoking bats on it and they got the cats from, what was it? Uh, what's the Hagen's, Hagen's grocery store. And in fact, this group has one of the Hagen's stanchions on, uh, statues on it that they had in the store. And, and but they forgot to bring their smiles. I don't know who, who does it. Yeah, oh, I taught them that one, you know, like this. And then every once in a while, the crew dresses up with all these bright sunglasses, and you get a shot like this. Mm, okay, so boat ran aground. The skipper strips down into his skibbies and hops in the water to push it off. And as soon as he got his big boy off of there, the boat started sailing away. So he grabs on. You drag him behind him, he gets up out of the boat, throws his life jacket on because he sees a photo boat coming over because we want to get a close up of what's going on. It was just a, it was a wild rumpus. All right. Now, how is it on earth that we could come across a boat with psycho duck painted on the side of it and have a duck right in front of it? You got to look for coincidences 
and quick like boom, 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 quick like a bunny, snap the photo. Now we've seen a lot of stuff on the water. This gal demonstrating how guys should do it <clears throat> if they need to relieve themselves. Although all of Puget Sound is a no discharge zone, that's like everybody honors the speed limit on I-5, right. So, and how, how gals actually do it, you know, they at least use the bucket and then dump it. And rail meet, we have all kinds of pictures. You, how many sailors are there in the room that understand the term rail meet? Okay, a few rail meet. So it's, and then rail feet. <clears throat> I just made that one up. And I don't know, I didn't know what to put on this as a descriptor. The guy was feeling feisty or something anyway. But Jan, of course, had to get had to get a shot of it. So like this action shot down at at the laser nationals in Cascade Locks. And the guy working hard to get it back upright. And sometimes it's so hard on that downwind leg that you just have to take a rest. You just have to like put your head on the pillow and just, just give it a break, all right? So, all right. Sometimes we see pirate ships. We've had graduates that are manning this tour vessel right now. And I don't know what to say about this, but this was in town for the 2005 Atoll ships. And they were all out at the Foss uh, Waterway Seaport while down here, at, at, the, uh, at the marina, they had this. I don't know whose boat that is. Pink Boat Regatta, we worked several a year. They got them in Seattle. They got them, uh, I know, in Bellingham. They've got them in Tacoma. Tacoma is where our home port is. We shoot that certainly every year. And they show off their pinks, pinkster. And, and occasionally we get a gorilla in the rigging in pink, pink fur. So I don't know. So it's not just about sail, winning the sailboat race. This is why are we out there? We're out there to have as good a freaking time as we can have. You know, so, and there's a lot, comes in a lot of different flavors, a lot of different flavors. <clears throat> like that, the limey bastard. I mean, who's, yeah, what, we don't name the boat. I don't know. Let's go get a stiff drink and figure it out. All right. Like Valkyrie. Yeah. Now here's a photo boat on a Seahawks game day. We put the 12th boat sign on it like this. And everybody cheers as we go by because they're Seahawks fans anyway. And we also work the Husky games that did work years ago, work the Husky games where before the game, you could tell their focus is not, not, not on football. It's on that can of beer or plural cans of beer pretty exciting stuff much like duck dodge on a tuesday night on lake union right it's not a race it's a race to you race that that beer but neither of us drink beer so we can go oh my gosh <clears throat> now calamity on the water have we seen a good bit of it yes this is a boat hard of ground when the water he brought it out the night before and tied it up so he didn't have to pay the $13 launch fee, then the bottom drops out on the tide. This is right at the Point Defiance boat ramp. We put the photo boat in, I walked down this float and I looked, he did a lot more than $13 worth of damage to his transom, a lot more. Wasabi, hard of ground at three tree point. Three time national champion in six meters, driving a Davidson 30 on a blustery Tuesday at Whidbey Island Race Week, and nobody's wearing a PFD, wear a PFD, one guy in the water, this guy hanging on for dear life trying to help that guy, a guy standing in the water, and this girl saying, I thought you said you could sail. <clears throat> but it's so important to win that race, you put up too much sail for those conditions. I don't know if you've sailed in Penn Cove, but how often do you get it? white caps and pen cove i mean just it was a hard blowing day now this is the double bluff buoy uh, for the race of the straits well you're supposed to pass it one side or the other not hit it on one side or the other you see and this is sachem anybody know the boat who owns sachem bill bucken several time olympic 
you know, champion, et cetera, et cetera. He's not on board. But these guys are screaming at this point. They're not screaming about the spinnaker or the buoy. They were screaming at us to go to heck away. I almost said hello. So that Bill doesn't see this photo. You see, don't do that. I mean, all kinds of stuff happens. Stuff happens it, because physics don't care and the sea doesn't care. The caring is up to the crew. So like, again, Charlie McCauley on absolutely, this is right before, boom, this happened. <clears throat> Scott to head race 2015. And you can see all the damage that the rigging did and they had mechanical cutters to cut the whole rig away and it now lies in about 400 feet of water in the center sound. He got a new boat for that, by the way, and a completely different paint design, but looks very similar. You see it on the water. That same race, this happened. So two boats, one race, this mastered. And there's a guy down below who is the owner skipper that was badly injured. Bad, you remember that? Yeah. And we escorted them all the way back to Shoal Shoal, three and a half hours, every 15 minutes, sit, sit rep, situation report to the Coast Guard on the condition of that. And it, it was just, it was a mess. Stuff happens. And you're thinking, Boston Whaler, that's really stable. It's no problem. Oh, and then this shot, uh, you know, I got this figured out. Boom. Upside down. Yep, 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 yep. And the race committee tied a big, big orange, big reddish orange thing to it so that nobody else would run over it. The guy was fine, but I had never seen a Boston Whaler upside down before in the water. I had not seen that before. We see all kinds of stuff. Like, <clears throat> no, the mark is moving. <laughs> yeah, we got a moving mark for this race. We go into West Bay Marina with a photo boat with a star boat on either side. We worked a Black Star Regatta down there. They had two rigging failures, one on one side, one on the other side. And they go into West Bay Marina. Oh, Jan, get a shot of that. The only thing worth keeping there is that little Yamaha engine anymore. Holy shamoly. So, <clears throat> and then shallow spots. You got to watch out for shallow spots. This boat found this shallow spot down in Commencement Bay. And just to confirm that shallow spot, the fireboat went out there to find it, make sure they located it, and they did. And not believing the fire department, the Tacoma police went out there and decided to check it out themselves, the same darn spot. So Jan decided to go check it out. But as smart as Jan is, she did it with drone. There's that shallow spot. This is her picture, Vigilant Shoal we call it now, named after the police boat that triple found it. I'm like, come on, this is on a chart. And the fire department is supposedly the harbor master for Commencement Bay, yeah. Boat. Here's a TP-52 that found the shallow spot inside the green buoy at West Point, trying to get off the bottom. <clears throat> guy overboard that this whole boat sierra 26 flipped all the way upside down turtled what they called turning turtle got it back upright not they're working trying to clear the spinnaker and so forth we had to go in and get this guy out of the water cold water immersion around here is a big big deal not hypothermia you gotta spend at least you know close to an hour to become unconscious due to hypothermia, but cold water immersion, you can't, we, he could not help us help him out of the water. And we take, took him roaring back to a marina to stand him in a hot shower to thaw him out. Here's another one. We did the same thing with, this is the Duwamish head race. And Mel, it's Mel, I almost said Mel, just San Juan 24, TP52 trying to help. And it's just stunning. The guy couldn't get his other arm up because he was in the water long enough he couldn't function. So, and then this, if this looks like absolutely, it's not. It's a red boat with yellow stripes and named Kentucky Woman, uh, woman out of uh, Evans Yacht Club. And it's lost at sea. This, this was the foul weather bluff buoy here, foul weather bluff race. And we saw them and we saw them the next year, saw them the next year. 
And the owner took a solo passage down the Pacific coast and the boat is lost, it's gone. And here's one during the 2008 toll ships in Tacoma, HMS Bounty, something, he hears something, he'll, he'll get our attention. HMS Bounty replica built for you know, the 1960 movie and Hurricane was approaching, Hurricane Bess was uh, approaching in the Atlantic Ocean and the owner of the boat directed the skipper and the crew to get underway to avoid the hurricane. How fast do you think this replica can go to avoid a hurricane? They were lost at sea, including two dead, the captain and a direct descendant of Fletcher Christian who served on the original, no kidding, real deal. Mutiny on the bounty, HM bounty, crazy stuff. And then from Anacortes Race Week, this is the boat that lost a sailor overboard, dragged behind the boat with his ankle wrapped in his spinnaker sheet for 10 minutes and drowned. They recovered his body, but you know, this is the real deal here is again, physics don't care, the sea doesn't care. If we could have been there when this was going on, we're on the other side of the fleet, not even realizing it. You see, our radio was on, nobody's communicating. There's gotta be some structure to your marine events to set out an all points bulletin, like get on the radio right away and every, the heck with the racing, get over there and help out. It's a different world out there. Not like you can pull over on the side of the road on I-5 and flag somebody down. It's not like that. So <clears throat> we do document derelict vessels. I've been appointed as a, a Pierce County Boating Advisory Commission member, and, and they're all worried about lake taps and boat wakes and so forth. I'm worried about derelict vessels trashing. There's a lot of trash on the highways. There's a lot of trash in the cities. I'm worried about trash on the salt water of Pierce County. Here's like this, Jan took this shot not too terribly long ago, right down by Owens Beach, down by Point Defiance. This one is right on, on the Theophos Waterway, as is this one, and this one today still is on the Theophos Waterway, on the floating docks, as is this one. I mean, just amazing. Remember that Martinac shipbuilding place that was for sale? This, if you were to drive down there tonight and look across the water is the boat that is not so slowly sinking right there, taking on water, see that? And they didn't put the oil boom around it even, didn't even bother to do that. And they got a little American flag flying right there. Somebody living aboard that trashing the Theophos waterway, which in the early 2000s, they paid $98.7 million to clean up that waterway. And this is what's happening to it now. All right, Ace of Navigation, Race Rocks Lighthouse, New Dungeness Light, Johnson Point there. This is Scattered Head, that's Foulweather Bluff. This is Alcatraz Shoal down in the San Francisco. Remember I told you that we did the 2013 cup. I said, you gotta get a picture of that buoy. I got a few all right. No, with Alcatraz Island behind it. Otherwise, nobody's going to believe that that's where that, that buoy was. That's Iceberg Point, which we saw this last weekend during around the county race. Davidson Rock, same thing. This is not from this year, not from last weekend, but we saw this Davidson Rock. Blakely Rock, you've all been around this area. You know this, this neck of the woods. Victor Hotel during Swisher race starts over. Uh, off of Victoria and then sails right out to the Swiftshire Bank. PA for Port Angeles, that's not the Pennsylvania buoy. It's uh, Port Angeles, Shill Shoal, Safe Water buoy. It used to be off of Shill Shoal, it's now no longer there. <clears throat> now, why so much focus on buoys and such? Including Lydia Shoal here, where it's a federal offense, by the way, to climb on one of these buoys. <laughs> And we think of their, oh, they're not so big. No, they're pretty darn big because we have, between the two of us, established years ago, flagship maritime training. We have two flagship, hold your hands up. We got a couple guys right here already. We weren't expecting you, but 
thank you for coming here. And <clears throat> we're for maritime training for United States Coast Guard credentials, not the safe voter card that your little sister can do. I'm talking about actual, and, and here's one of Jan's um, shots of where we're located right on the Theophos waterway and what we do during the week. This is our excellent adventure ashore. And I want you to see Buddy the Sea Flea right there. You see him? And it says on the window, Jan's Marine Photography. So this is where we work. Again, work. And it's about the water. We aspire during the week with our training facility. With five minutes left, uh, good luck. I'll, I'll try to speed up. All those photos of the ACE and navigation are displayed in there for training purposes. There's a classroom. There we are with our flagship stuff. And now I'm pounding through. Here I am talking with groups of students. Over 3,400 graduates, excuse me, 4,000 graduates. Now we did a recount. She's the boss. She does all the credentialing stuff. And 4,000 graduates, a lot of them. But captain's licenses for what? This is something else that we focused on are commercial businesses that use our graduates. Every single one of these photos has a flagship graduate. This tribal out of the Macaw Marina. Fishing guides, parasailing, ride the ducks no more, right? Argosy cruise, cruises just came through. Argosy, the smallest beavers, the smallest Argosy boat they have. Foss tugs, several people, Foss tugs. And when was the last time you saw a tugboat towing a tugboat from a different company? Uh, that doesn't happen so often. That's pretty embarrassing. Crowley tugged off a double bluff. Pushing ahead, there, catch a can Alaska. I'm trying to move through it, but we only have 100 more photos to do. Puget Sound pilots, we have graduates there. Um, shot of a Swiftsure. Marine law enforcement courses, 40 different agencies, hundreds of officers, municipal, county, state, and federal, and on the water, all kinds of stuff. I'll pound through every single one of these. I can name who's driving that boat. Craig Cooper, Greg Cooper, so forth, like that. Large vessels, do they come through our sailing areas? Yeah, so we shoot them, photograph them. Ferries do, like this, larger vessels. And all this comes into play in our rules of the road conversation during the course, who has precedence, a shot from Can Can and the Canadian side over toward the US in the Strait of Juan de Fuca coming right by Marrowstone Island there with the Olympics in the backdrop. Sometimes we get right in front of them, but the Puget Sound pilots welcome us to be there and take those photographs. Large yacht up in Bellingham Bay, marine life, a lot of birds, a lot of birds. <clears throat> in fact, on top of the Foss Waterway Seaport, those birds and on Chambers Bay, all kinds of, this is inside the breakwater, Shoal Shoal, this is on Protection Island for anybody who's poked into that little little harbor there. Kind of a fun one. Here's a bird keeping a lookout at the marina, Foss Harbor Marina. Jetty Cat out of Westport. And I don't know what this was on the bottom, but I had her shoot it. Boom, she, she did. And then a lot of marine mammals, like this mom and a pup on the log boom and the starboard side as you go into Oak Harbor Marina, and sometimes their living conditions aren't clean, aren't ideal. The old hamburger buoy off of Shill Shoal, which is now also gone. And then the mark here playing there, big boy saying, hey, thanks for the platform, now go away. Orcas, and Jan, where'd you take this? Run on the Tacoma waterfront? Walking along the Tacoma waterfront, there it is while she's walking, buddy. And then 2017, she shot this at the southern tip of uh, Point Dalco on Vashon Island, 80-foot uh, fin whale up on the beach. So our maritime future doesn't lie with us. It lies with the kids. We love, love, love photographing kids on the water, enjoying sailing. A lot of sailors. 
<clears throat> I'm trying to punch through it here, but it's our responsibility to create. So let's take a look at that word responsibility, response ability, response able. These kids need to know how to respond in a culturally or legal, you know, et cetera, way, a proper, cordial way, not like some of the stuff we see out of the youth today or the any drivers on I-5 and so forth. We're talking about being responsible. Look sharp, feel sharp, be sharp. Anybody remember that saying where that comes from? That's the old motto for the Gillette Razor, Straight Razor Corporation. Remember that now? I say that. Look sharp, feel sharp, be Well, I know that because I'm a thousand years old, but that was, I think that's what we need to be as examples for the youngsters. And so proper training, that's classroom stuff, weather conditions, or getting out in the photo boat and practicing with it in tight quarters, crew engagement. If you get tired or if you get sore, or if you get mindfully unplugged or your body's not working, this is going to impact your safety and the safety of your crew and your passengers on board. So here's a, just to finish up the took of me. I just had to be close to the ocean. I, I've never, once I got there, I never wanted to go away again. Um, the saying, and, and it really struck me as being so, the cure for anything is salt water, sweat, tears, or the sea. And frankly, I've had a lot of all three of those. And they mean the world to me. Sometimes the tears are tears of joy, sometimes not. And sweat is an issue of exertion that I don't mind. Let's stay fit, let's get fit. But the sea, holy shimoli, just standing watch on the bridge wing of a large ship out in the middle of the ocean, dark of night, this, this really appeals to me. So whichever way you go with photography, <clears throat> I would, I would um, wish you smooth sailing, great photos, experiment, point the camera in any direction you want to point it and get moving, have a fun time with it. So if anybody has any questions, I think we're going to go offline here shortly. Um, let's, let's gather around and talk with Jan directly. All right. If you've got some questions for her about the camera equipment, I can't even spell camera. I mean, she's, she, she's the boss, as I said. Any questions? Oh, I'm lower. I have to check her. So she's the one. She's the one. All right. Thank you all.